Hi, Commander Kimmick and salutes you. Today's topic is Russia versus Japan. So I asked what would happen if Russia went to war with Japan. Russia is one of the superpowers, has great numbers in army and nuclear power. Of course, this hypothetical scenario doesn't let nukes and allies. It is same moral and same status starting. Japanese army is created as self-defense force after World War II and US forces deployed over homeland. But what would happen if US forces let homeland and Japan stay alone? Of course, air forces would join quickly. Now the air bases are shown in map, but generally most of Russian air bases are located in west and east, but has no combat jet allowed. And breaking jets will take maybe whole day. Russia almost has twice times more fighter planes with extra its parts, but Japanese planes have lesser for the advantage, and flying cars of Japanese pilots for a year is a bit more. The fight for air superiority will be on Japan's north region, and during all that's happened, Hakoid Island will be host owner for Japanese jet. Well, for a of civilians will make some service busy and it will take several days. Russian best advantage is their huge bomber fleet. Through that, they will create a great terror over civilians and confused forces. At least on the paper it is. But Japan really has great number in early warning and it's big problem for Russia. But really ranking capability is on Russian side. And thinking of status, Russian best ranking capability will be their satellite. Japanese Northern Army is capable for defending homeland from Russia because their air defenses will be a big problem for Russians. However, long range SAMs are located to middle and south part against North Korean missile attack, but SAMs can be brought to north within a day. Russian attack fleet will be needed to fly at high altitude because otherwise they won't be able to stay in mission area for a long time, and this will cause them more seen by raiders and losing more planes. Also, Japanese fighters would hunt them easier if they play in offensive position. Of course, Russia has a lot of long-range stamps in number, and on the paper some of them lock Japanese airspace. But really are they? Let's see. Well, as the soldiers know, radar signals can't see the whole area due to... due to world's curve. So if Wikipedia says S-400 has 400 range, you should know that it doesn't mean it can hit target from 400 away. There now you can see how much high we need to see all area and how much altitude we need to be seen. Here I chose F-35 as example, but of course all aircrafts have different radar cross section. So instead of all of you soldiers think, Japanese planes can't take off freely, and they will leave from own airspace as adjusting fly altitude. Russian and other advantage on the other hand would be their strategic cruise and ballistic missiles. Their targets would be most ports, bases, bridges and roads for delayed civilians migration. And Navy. As an objective commander, I can say that Russia has the worst geopolitics for the Navy. And ironically, there are ice as well as long distance. Unfortunately, most of the air includes ice over water and it will cause the slow motion of Russian ships. Such that Russian ships can late even one week than as it should reach. Russia does have more combat surface platforms, but as you saw, all of them are divided to four different fleets. So here we must examine surface combat platforms of the Pacific fleet. And sadly for Russians, Japanese have advantage there with more modern ships. Pacific fleet is divided to headquarters. If we start talking about Vladivostok first, Russia will sail the sea with lesser and lighter ships and will find themselves across of the huge Japanese destroyers. But if Japanese navy try to push forward, they would enter Russian airstrike circle and it will cause lose more ships. So they must stay close to own coast and defend homeland there. Their best movement would be anti-ballistic missile launch even not prevent all. And Russia still has hundreds kilometer range of missiles but they are quite slow and useless against its strong Japanese naval based air defense. If you would like to know more about Aegis defense system, Binko already made the tell one. Watch him and learn more. And Southern Islands on the other hand could be threatened by the Black Sea fleet for the next times. But this time they would get a lot air strike by the Japanese guided missiles. Also, Japanese anti-ship missiles are national and quite quality, flies fast and low altitude. In the north on the other hand, Japan won't have air support but still they have to break Russia. But Russian combat convoys carry a lot anti-submarine rockets and that's real risk for Japanese submarines. Because they are the biggest diesel electric submarines in the world and that makes the possibility of it getting hit more likely. So attacking combat convoys in the north can be called suicide. Japanese submarines are quite modern, some of them able for launching sub harpoon. Instead of attack armored convoys, Japan might be tried to catch along cargo ships. However, of course there will be Russian anti-submarine platforms both from surface and air. And Japanese submarines will can need to wait in silent mode a lot, such that it can take days. 
Well, as we see here, Pacific Fleet has really small number in air supported anti-submarine warfare platforms, and bringing helicopters and planes will take a lot of time. Also, all we know that bases of Russian naval aviation in Pacific won't be enough to take all platforms. Russian submarine fleet on the other hand will be the most hopeless part of this war. They are mostly nuclear powered and quite big. Some of them are the biggest nuclear powered subs in the world. And their land is over 150 meters. Some of them reach 180 meters. And Japanese ships will move with their carriers as all we know. And using nuclear submarines as conventional submarines in such a conventional war means lose a lot of subs against Japanese anti-submarine platforms. But then what could Russia do with their submarines? Well, probably they will go launch guided missiles from far away. But Japanese ships have vertical launched anti-submarine missiles which really create risk for Russian submarines. And even if they can't pass 30 kilometers, Russian sub-launched missiles have no GPS guide. So this bad status will force Russians to come closer to Japanese ships to create better salvos. But during this happens, they will take big risks. Russian best position would be their Kylo class submarines. If they can reach in enough time from Kamchatka, they would go mine Kuril Islands. But why they need to go mining Kuril Islands? Well, sadly but surely, Kuril Islands not armed a lot. After World War II, Soviets invaded South Islands and before years, some of South and all North Islands are occupied by Russian Sardom. Well, Russia is fairly big country. As all we know that it has disadvantage like this advantage. Russia really has great number in ground forces, it's quite huge, and has to send test troops into fight area. But still some problem there is. Russian big military part is located in the west, and there is quite long distance. Long distance causes long time lose as all you know, but Russia must transport them quickly. Early fleet here comes mine first, but their preparing will take a lot of time, because equipment, vehicles, foods and much more stuff will be carried by them. So literally, transporting brigades will take maybe weeks. Range of the Russian transport fleet in the other hand is more hopeless. Most of them will go refueling. And it will cause more air traffic, more airport business and more time losing. Here you see the range of the planes. It's really sad for Russia. Because most of them can't cover even half of country. And again, not all near airports and bases will help because of fulness by the fighters. Strike, bomber and cargo planes. Helicopters also. But then what? Well, now I will try to analyze brigades which are close to fight area. Now we are looking Eastern Military District. In the Ulan Yuda region, we see one tank, one airborne and two mechanized brigade. Fastest of them would be airborne brigade of course. But tank and mechanized brigades need weight more. If you go east more, there will see four different but same mission brigades. But more interest. 59th Fortress Brigade is stationed for protect Jewish Autonomous Oblast border from China. And well, like here I didn't add artillery brigades, I didn't add more. Because according to me they won't be much able for island location. In the south on the other hand, we see two mechanized, one airborne and one amphibious brigade. And again, airborne brigade will move first. Also, I believe that Russian marines took parachute train and they can move together with weather wear. In the Sakhalin island we see one brigade. Russian regiment in Kuril island is part of them though. In the most north region there is one marine brigade. They would mostly use helicopters and landing crafts. And now let's check in Russian amphibious motion in the Pacific for Kuril island. Well, distance is still a big problem and Kuril islands are quite much number. Also Russian amphibious capability isn't big. I talk for generally but it's same for Pacific too. And Russian salt marines have risk during sailing. Because they will be close to Japanese coast a lot and it brings risks like getting shot. So here we can talk about any Russian success by the marines. Plus there is Japanese submarine risk. So what? I talk so much but what will happen to Kuril Islands? Short answer. Japan will attempt to landing over islands. Well, Japanese ground forces isn't weak much but they are all proficient and in better position compared to Russia. Of course, not all army in north but bringing them fight area will take maybe 10 times less than Russia. Their first target will be Habomai Islands. There are about 13 islands and most of them are almost in artillery range. These islands are armored and not mountainous and no need landing crafts because small boats would be enough. Habomai Islands would fall within 10 hours and operation began. And the first task they placed these would be artillery, personnel and short range surface air missiles. But still Japanese soldiers need to be careful because there can be traps. Other southern islands on the other hand will drain the blood. Russian regiment in the Kuril Islands is stationed in the Itrup Islands. And they have two choose. 
First is going to islands and second is waiting reinforcements. Actually both choices are useless. Because if they wait reinforcements, till they come Japan will take Kuneshi and Chikotun islands quickly. And will learn them fast. Or if they go islands for defending, most of them will be removed by the Japanese army. But scenario doesn't allow waiting. They will go defending. Japanese next target would be Shikatan Island. It is quite mountainous and forested but not irresistible. Though if we think that some parts of regiment will defend Kuneshira Island there won't be huge Russian number. But still Russian soldiers can station there with their anti-ship missiles. To be honest Japan will lose a lot of their vessels because this area is quite able for saturation attack. So in first stage instead of landing ships they will use light and fast ships. Japanese coast guard will join there also for minimalizing casualties. And Japan will attack there with electronic countermeasures, deployed artilleries and airstrikes. And at the end they will take island. While all this happens, Russian fire troopers will be landed to air troop island. And all we as know, they will come before the other army units. But there is some problem. Island is mostly covered with mountains and finding flat is almost impossible. Because even flat territories are rugged. Even if fire troopers land successfully, airdropped equipments won't. Airports on the other hand will be the another part of this reinforcement. But they are quite small and according to dimensions they take plane between 2 and 8. Plus they would get threatened by the Japanese rockets and missiles. I believe that Japanese artillery and rockets will success with their guided bullets and especially in landing over Kuneshira Island. Also, incoming Russian cargo planes must fly together with combat planes because they stay in risk by the Japanese air force. And Russian combat capable planes will must fly in subsonic speed because of escorting. Attacking air fleet from cross will give better kill rate to Japan. And big landing. Kaneshira Island is big and hard to take but in new status it will be surrounded by the Japanese forces. The island is mostly mountainous but still there are flats which suitable for landing. And some of those flats come together from both sides. And it makes Japanese business easier. So instead of get hills and mountains, Japanese will surround them and conquer the salt within two days since nice operation start. And one landing point includes a town. After Japanese assault troops do their job successfully, Japanese tanks will land, which are designed for such a mountains and forested area. And within five days since nice operation start, Japanese will take whole island. Well, I don't know what would happen for YouTube Island, because when Japanese come they will find Russian reinforcements which are already deployed over island. Plus, Island is quite big and hard to conquer, but we can't know. In the end of war, Japan will plant their flag over the island and add them to own territorial waters. Japan would live with marginal victory. But still, it's nice to know that such a war never will happen. In the reality, US never leave Japan alone, and Russia would never accept enter such a war, neither Japan would accept lost a lot of soldiers. But in this scenario, you soldiers saw how everything is not like on the paper. But still, if those two countries went to war, result would be similar something like this.